install a big IY on the front brake hits, either uh, 256 or 280 millimeters. I'm going to go around uh, the parts that are in the kit um, and uh, the different features and benefits out of them. Uh, number one, uh, the stainless steel braided lines that actually come with the kit are uh, DOT certified and they also are CNC machined to properly sit inside the, um, the brackets that are welded inside the wheel well. You also have these little grommets that actually fit inside the, uh, the, the bracket that's on the, on the shucks also. Uh, and it comes the calipers either in red or black with the proper piston sizing to go with your cars. Right here we have the uh, fasteners to mount the calipers and the brackets to the spindle. Also included is uh, Permatex glue. Here we have the centering shims. I'll show that a bit, a bit after when we're installing it. It's actually to center the caliper if needed because of the tolerancing on the spindles and the mounting holes. Hawk brake pads. Hawk really, you know, good brand name. Either available in HBS or DTC 60 in stock or you can actually order uh, DTC 30s and other compounds as needed. Here, um, what you need to get on your own, either a 256, which is a 256 millimeter uh, rotors from a Scirocco uh, 60 valve, Mark II, or you can get the G60 Corrado uh, for lug holes for the uh, Mark I fitment. These here are the G60 280 millimeters, and uh, brand name Zimmerman, you can get those from your local auto parts uh, store. And as an option that you have, we can actually supply the uh, Tech 53 hats for the very lightweight, um, uh, the lightweight uh, option that you have. And these bolt on to either slotted or slotted and drilled rotors uh, right out of the catalog from Wildwood. So we'll uh, go on to the car and start doing some mounting. Uh, just first off, we're going to take off the caliper and the carrier. What I really like to do is actually leave the brake line until the end and actually that way you don't lose all your braking fluid and it doesn't go on the floor and everything else. So um, you have to have a 15 millimeter thin key for this one here and uh, after that we're going to go, I, I prefer to take off the uh, caliper off the carrier and then have easier access to the bolts in the back in order to get off the, uh, on the on, from the spindle. Um, Usually I'll hang the caliper either with the tie wrap or something or a zip tie. Uh, this one here we can just leave dangling because we're going to change the hoses anyways. But this can actually put a, an undue strain on the hose. So yeah, just leave it dangling out of the way. What I like to do is actually uh, go in with the tap and probably clean up the M6 threads here that are here for the retaining nut. I retain the screw. There's only one way the uh, caliper adapter can be put on. It actually goes pretty well uh, on the shape of the caliper. So we're going to start by installing just a bracket. Inside the package, uh, there's some uh, blue thread locker. So actually, I'm going to use this one here because we have these in stock and, and paste form. Just use a blue thread locker uh, for both the caliper bracket mounting screws and the uh, caliper screws themselves. Um, one thing maybe I should point out is whenever you're installing the bracket, is try to get the loose out towards the outside as much as possible, both on the bracket and when you put on the caliper because of clearance, it's really, really tight.
Next up is actually put on the rotor. Uh, we've got the OEM countersunk screws from Volkswagen here. I always like to put a little bit of NPCs on those, so that way, easier to take out when you get there next time around. You bolt on the caliper. You don't have to worry about putting the pads right away since it's a, it's a front pad clip mount, so we can take care of that after. And again, put some blue Loctite on the caliper bolts and install the caliper. Like I said before, it's always important that you try to actually, you don't torque them all the way through, just tighten them up and actually pull it out so that way you have the most clearance possible on diameter of the, of the disc compared to the rotor. Here you can see that the corner here has more clearance than this side. This one here is really tight. This is actually because of the machining tolerances on the spindle. And that's where you actually use the shims in order to put the disc really centered to have an equal amount of space on both sides. The, the shims that are supplied are one millimeter or 39 thou, and that's about what you need right here. Here we need to take it off again. I'm taking off the screws from the caliper and I will be putting the shim between the bracket and the caliper to bring the caliper outboard. For, the, uh, for holding the uh, brake pads to show you a bit more closer what the clearance is. Here on the OD is fine and you have pretty much equal spacing here. I know it's really tight but this here as long as they're equal and there's no there has to be no interference whatsoever, you're good to go. The hog brake pads, you have uh, some uh, gearhead grease pack. I usually take a bit and just put some in the back and just put a small little film where the uh, piston will actually have contact. This could help in, in reducing the noise, if any. Never had any problems with noise without this, but it's actually supplied with it, so go ahead and do it. For your information, it's actually um, a 3 16 um, standard uh, Allen key in the back here for the retaining, uh, the uh, locking screw. So you have the 15 degree, the 15 degree actually kind of here is the uh, caliper on that side here. The actual grommet itself, you can see it's split. Turn it around so actually it goes in. And you can actually just pry it in. There you go. Now the only thing you need to do, next step after that, when both calipers are on, I'll just finish up by putting the nut inside on the fitting. The banjo bolts are a lot less strong than any other bolts because of their design, because of the hole in the center and the holes on the side to, to for the uh, brake fluid to go through. The torque spec on these M10s are actually 13 foot-pounds or 18 newton meters. Just be sure you don't over torque them.
Well, this sums up pretty well the uh, installation of the front brakes, both the 256 and 280 millimeters. Remember that to bleed the brakes in an ordinary fashion, and there is a bleeder in the back and in the front of the caliper and bleed them both. Um, stay tuned on our channel. We will also have the rear kit that we developed, the rear disc kit that we developed, and there will be an install video on this. Meanwhile, we do have our website and the PDF format instructions, but we will still go ahead with the video. And um, we might have a couple of things we'd like to show you. We'd just like to say that we also carry the WaveTrack limited split differentials. Uh, we do installs and we also try to steer you in the right way. We also have the suspension components from ST, KW, H&R and all those guys. We actually also have the uh, H&R Club Sports, uh, which are specially designed for the Mark 1s for the track applications. You can contact us. And uh, there's one more little thing we'd like to show you. One thing that we, we are proud of is we actually do our own uh, research and development and engineering house. Uh, we actually make some of our own machines to uh, cut the parts and machine the parts. A uh, big shout out to uh, Gabriel. Uh, this is a father and son business. Gabriel, uh, who is in mechanical engineering, 20 years old. Big shout out to you, Gabriel. Um, don't hesitate to call us and reach for us on uh, any specific applications for really Volkswagen uh, water-cooled uh, chassis and, and components. We're here to help you and we really specialize in uh, one-offs and custom applications. So give us a shout. Thanks and stay tuned.